you know, it was eerie because it was this beautiful day outside. It was warm and sunny. The most lush lighting imaginable. And there was actually just like this dull thud. And I said, no, 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 it's got to be an accident. People were running and it was like they were being, they were running from paper and, and particles in the area. It's like a ticker tape parade. There was a moment before that plane and there was a moment after and it's like two different worlds. There was now quite a bit of flame and smoke, but all surrounding that opening were people. And then I was looking up and I actually saw like somebody jump. And then quite a few started jumping, people started jumping together. I think that if they even had a moment to like look and make that decision, I can't even imagine. The first tower collapses and there was like this communal groan. I remember thinking, well, all the people must be out of the building because you couldn't have such a thought and, pr and process it to think, well, I'm watching this building come down and all of these people are being killed. You right? could hear the city as a whole just make this incredible sound of grief. I feel like I can remember the exact second when the whole world changed and my life changed forever. It really was the feeling of this really could be it. Because once it collapsed, everything was different. The smoke covered us. I mean, it must not have been even a minute before we were completely enveloped. And it was just such a strange sight. All those people in white or gray dust, and they, they lost their shoes. They were walking on their bare feet. So there was a sense in which everyone was really trapped on the island. There was nowhere to run. We were at the water's edge. And then as we w went out into the water, we had a perfect view of the World Trade Center. This huge amount of dust and smoke. And it was so strange because I know how close Manhattan is from that point. But it, it, was, it was invisible. We got off the boat and we looked back and it looked like all of Manhattan was burning down. How is that possible? You know, are, were we that vulnerable? I remember people sitting in a train and it was so quiet. People were reading papers and crying because of what they saw and read. But that was combined with all these missing people signs on every single street corner in my neighborhood. God, there was pictures of families. You know, all those beautiful pictures, lovely people at their weddings with babies, Christmas. I'll sort of have a vision of it in the mornings before I go to work. I want to feel safe until it's 10 o'clock every morning. I've developed phobias from this and one of them is the subway. I was really scared about what I might see when I emerged from the subway. There will be a few uh, moments a day that I cried hysterically about what happened. I've had like um, a lot of memory loss and And I've been, you know, incredibly unfocused. I've started to feel angry. Angry that my life has been so disrupted and that I have to feel scared every single day. I really do feel this very genuinely, that we were living in a dream. I think you have to rebuild maybe a memorial structure with people's names. Someplace quiet and contemplative. I don't uh, believe that we should put up more skyscrapers. That's insane. I mean, you can't replace them. You can't replace people. I just hope that they come up with a memorial that is somehow human. Out of respect for the totally incomprehensible number of individual people that were taken from us. I'm 
sure in some ways that I may not be able to describe, I have changed. I mean, I, th I think everybody in New York has changed a little. I hope that I'm okay from this, you know, 10 years from now and... Um... I've seen it with so many people here afterwards. An amazing power to just go on no matter what happens. And people just pulling themselves up and saying, okay, we still have the strength to go on.